In this video, you'll learn some methods for drying out your freshly cut wood so you can start using it in your woodworking projects as fast as possible. I recently did a video on where you can get your hands on lots of free wood, as well as a video about how you can process that wood. In this video, which may go a little longer than the usual three minutes or so, I'll share some do-it-yourself style ideas for drying wood out at home relatively quickly. Now let me start by saying that I'm by no means a lumber professional. I do all this stuff for fun and these are just things that I've learned over the years that work pretty well. So if you have any ideas or tips of your own about drying out wood, please feel free to share them in the comments below. First of all, after getting your wood back home, it's a good idea to clean it up. Trim or break away any soft, rotting, or bug-damaged bark on the outside of the wood with a large chisel or the backside of a hammer. Next, use a stiff bristle brush to sweep away all the loose bark, dirt, and sawdust, and then go over each piece of wood on both sides with a shop vac to finish things off. Now if there's evidence of insect activity in a particular piece of wood, then as a precautionary measure, you can spray the board down with plain old white vinegar, which acts as a natural insecticide and which also won't discolor or damage your wood. So after all the wood is cleaned up, give the ends of each board or slab a good coat or two of a wood grain sealer such as Anchor Seal. Now as an alternative, you can use several coats of plain latex paint for this purpose, which I used to do quite a bit in the past, but I found that a product such as Anchor Seal works much better as far as preventing the wood from cracking, checkering, or splitting as it begins to dry out. Something else I do is to put some end sealer on any areas of wood that might have a slight crack or the beginning of a crack, which seems to help it from getting worse during the drying process. After applying the end sealer and letting it dry, stack up your wood in a dry, well-ventilated place, which for me is the corner of the garage on my wood drying rack or outside under a covered porch with the bigger pieces. Now it's very important to promote and maintain good airflow in between each piece of wood as well as the area that you're going to be drying it in. And to do that, you'll need to put stickers, as they're called, or small planks of wood in between each slab or each plank of lumber. I typically use sticks that are around one inch thick and place anywhere from two to four stickers in a uniform fashion in between each piece of wood, depending on how long it is. It's also important to make sure you use the same size stickers for each piece of wood to help prevent warping while it dries. And as a final measure of precaution to help keep the wood from warping while it ages, you can place heavy objects, such as old weights, on each wood stack, again in a balanced, uniform fashion. After the wood is all cleaned, organized, and stacked, it's a matter of letting nature take its course and drying out the wood. As a rule of thumb, it typically takes one year of drying time for each inch of wood thickness. Now it may seem like it will take forever until you can finally start working with the wood that you've cut and processed, and no doubt it can be very hard to be patient during the drying process. There are, however, ways to greatly accelerate this process, such as running a box fan on your stack of wood while it's drying. I keep a fan going on medium speed during the first few weeks of drying to accelerate the process, which definitely speeds things up. I'm usually able to dry out a one to one and a half inch thick piece of wood in a matter of months instead of waiting years. Now the biggest question folks have in regard to all of this is how do you know exactly when your wood is dried out and ready to be put to use? One of the most accurate ways to do this, which I highly recommend, is to use a moisture meter. You can get these at wood shops and also on places like Amazon. Keep checking the moisture level of your wood until it stabilizes and holds steady at the lowest number that you can get it to for several weeks in a row. As far as I know, there's really no magic number to look for, as it will depend on where you live, how thick the wood is, what kind of wood it is, and so on. Again, the key is for that number to get as low as possible and then to stabilize. So once you get that number down as low as you can get it for an extended period of time, that's probably as low as the moisture level is going to go. Thus, your wood is ready to be used. Now again, keep in mind that this is going to take several months to even several years, depending on how thick the wood is and the environment in which you're drying it. 
so you're going to have to be patient one way or the other. And as I mentioned earlier, if you have any ideas on this topic that you'd like to share, please do so in the comments below. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, be sure to subscribe to this channel and check out the 3 Minutes Outdoors website at 3minutesoutdoors.com. And finally, if you'd like to support this channel, click on the link in the video description below to find out more.